There was once, long ago, a very learned magician who lived not all that far from where you live now. On top of a steep-sided hill overlooking a small town in the valley was where he built his tower. This magician knew all of the languages of all the nations and understood all of the mysteries of the world. For he had a book, and the book opened on hinges that were made of iron. And the four corners of the book were protected with corners that were made of iron. And whenever the magician wished to open the book, he would have to open the clasp, and the clasp was made of iron. And the book itself was chained to the table with a chain that was made of iron. And the table itself was made fast to the floor with four feet that were made of iron. And the book was locked with a padlock that was made of iron. And when the magician wished to open the padlock, he used a key. Can you guess what it was made of? That's right. Jelly. Only he might read from it, because it contained so many spells and secrets. It told of how many angels can dance on the head of a pin, exactly what kind of cheese the moon is made of, the names of all the animals, not the names that we humans have given them, but their true animal names, of the time before time, and what will occur after time has run its course, of trolls, goblins, elves, pixies, boggarts, and every other magical creature. It told what dreams are actually made of, how to find the end of a rainbow, and why your toast always lands butter side down. In short, everything you might ever need to know was contained within the pages of this book. Now, this famous magician had a pupil, a young girl who was very inquisitive and always getting into trouble. Well, I say pupil, to be honest, she was little more than a servant. She did all the mopping, all the dusting, all the cleaning, washed the magician's underpants. She did all that sort of thing. And one day, the magician went to town. He had to buy some ingredients for some of his spells. And he also wanted some sausages for his tea. And the young pupil was mopping the kitchen floor like that. And she looked out the window and she could see the magician walking down the path towards the town. And she thought, he's going to be ages Now's my chance. <laughs> and she ran all the way up the spiral staircase that went up the centre of the tower. Up, 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 up she went, all the way to the top floor. She crept along the corridor towards the very end, to the magician's private study. The door was closed, but she knew it was never locked. She pulled open the door. <laughs> It was dark inside the room, but when her eyes adjusted to the gloom, the girl looked around at what she could see. <gasps> there was his furnace. Over there, the crucible for changing copper into gold and lead into silver. And there, his magic mirror in which he could see all that was happening anywhere in the world. Here was a shell which, when held up to the ear, whispered all the words spoken by anyone whose secrets the magician wished to know. The girl lit a fire. She was good at lighting fires. It was one of the things the magician always asked her to do for him. Soon there was a nice fire going, which brightened up the room a little. What shall I do first? She thought to herself, looking around. Um, I know. And she went over to the crucible and she tried to turn copper into gold. But all she succeeded in making was a sort of black, gooey mess. She thought. Um, she stared into the magic mirror. But all she saw was some sort of swirling mist. Oh, that's no good, she thought. What else could I do? Um, and she held up the magic shell to her ear. But all she could hear was murmuring in a language she didn't even understand. Oh, the reason I can't do these things, she thought, is because all the secrets are in his book. And she wandered over to the iron table and she placed her hands on the book. But it's no good, she said to herself. The magician will never have left it. <gasps> He's left it unlocked. She couldn't believe it. And before she could change her mind, she opened the book 
and flipped through the pages. Every page was covered in illustrations and writing, black and red writing in a language she didn't understand. She chose a page at random, put her finger on the top line, and before she could stop herself, she read it out loud. All at once the room went dark, the fire went out, and the floor trembled. Rain clouds suddenly appeared inside the room, and then with a clap of thunder, right there in front of her appeared a horrible creature, with eyes like burning lamps and the tusks of a great beast. It was an ogre, and the girl had just read the spell to summon it. Set me a task, O master, said the ogre in a voice like the roaring of a furnace. The girl just stood there in shock, unable to say a word. Set me a task, or I'll throttle thee. But still, the girl couldn't speak. The great ogre took one step towards her, reached out with his clawed hand, and touched her throat with his grotty fingernail. And where his finger touched her, it burned her flesh. Set me a task. What are the plants? She said it was the first thing that popped into her brain and she pointed to a small pot of herbs that stood by the door in which she'd entered. The magician sometimes used herbs to make medicines. The ogre looked at the small pot of herbs, looked back at the girl, and then vanished, leaving behind a little puff of smoke. Oh, had he gone for good? Maybe the ogre thought the task was beneath him or something. But no, with another clap of thunder, the ogre appeared once more, but this time he was carrying a huge barrel, nearly as large as he was, and it was full to the brim with water. Water the plants, he growled, and he poured all the water over the herbs. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's too much, shouted the girl, but the ogre just ignored her, and all the water had flattened the herbs in their little pot and absolutely ruined the carpet in the study. Then the ogre glared at the girl with his flaming eyes. Thank you, said the girl. You can go now. The ogre vanished once more. Oh, thank goodness, thought the girl. I'd better go and get my mop and bucket. It's going to take me ages to dry out this carpet and the magician will be back any minute. But before she could leave, there was another clap of thunder. And the ogre was back holding another barrel of water. Water the plants, he growled, and he poured another entire barrel of water all over the already sodden plants and floor. Enough! Stop! shouted the young lass. But again, and again, the ogre vanished and reappeared, each time with a fresh barrel of water, and each time he would growl, Water the plants! And then proceed to empty the barrel. Soon, the girl stood ankle deep in water. Again and again the ogre appeared, and more and more water he emptied out into the room. The girl waded across the room, the magician's special book, and she opened it to try and find the spell that would make the ogre vanish permanently, but no matter where she flipped to, she couldn't understand a word of it. The water rose to the girl's knees, and she anxiously kept flicking through the pages of the spell book to see if she could find any way to put an end to all this horribleness. But it was all gobbledygook. The water was now up to the girl's waist, so she climbed onto the table, and all the magician's tools were floating around the room, his crucible, his magic mirror, the magic shell, and the water kept on rising, up to the girl's chest, up to the girl's neck, up to her chin. Oh, I wish I'd learned to swim, she thought, and vaguely she begged the ogre to stop. But the ogre didn't care. The ogre didn't listen. Water the plants! Water the plants! Water the plants! Water the plants! Bellowed the ogre. And if something hadn't been done about it, that ogre might have been emptying barrels of water to this very day, drowning all of Britain. But just then, down in the town, the magician was about to pay for his sausages, and he put his hand in his pocket to get some money out, and he felt something. Something made of jelly. Oh, it was his magic key. 
his key to open his spell book back at home. And he had a terrible feeling that he hadn't locked it this morning. And then he had an awful realisation that something bad was happening back at home. Uh, terribly sorry, said the magician. Uh, must dash. And he ran out of the butcher's shop, across the market square, out of town, up the hill, into his tower, and all the way up to the top floor, up the spiral staircase. He reached the door of his study. The door was closed, but there seemed to be some sort of commotion going on behind it. And just as inside the water was bubbling over the top of the girl's head, he pulled open the door. All the water rushed out. Sending him, the girl, and the ogre shooting down the spiral staircase. Out the front door. Down the hill. Into the town. Into the market square. And all the town people gathered round and they looked down at the absolutely soaking wet girl, a magician, an ogre. And the magician got to his feet. Look of fury on his face, absolutely soaking wet he was. And he said some magic words and the ogre vanished for good this time. The words the magician spoke were actually just the words of the original spell spoken backwards. But the girl wasn't to know that, was she? No. He looked down at his young pupil. You've got some explaining to do, young lady. She had a lot of cleaning to do as well. And as punishment, she wasn't allowed to use magic. No. She had to get down on her hands and knees and scrub with sponges and mops and buckets. It took her ages to get the place back to normal, I can tell you. Well, I just did. The end. <laughs>